Hello. In this video, we are going to discuss a branch of cellular automata called probabilistic cellular automata and show how these systems can represent real-life emergent behaviors. We are also going to show examples of cellular automaton systems that are used to simulate real-world systems. And we are going to make a system ourselves to model b the biological um, process of evolution in plants. Let's begin with defining cell cellular automata. A cellular automaton is a system of discrete interacting entities following a simple set of rules. An, en an entity can be in one of a finite number of states and changes between these states depending on the states of its neighbors. Cellular automaton systems are useful in many fields of study because they have the ability to produce complex behavior that can be used as an as analogous models of complex real-world systems that would otherwise be problematic to observe. Let's take a look at some cellular automata systems. The perfume rule is a system where every dynamic entity moves in one direction until it encounters another dynamic entity or a static entity at which time it makes a 90 degree turn. This system produces behavior similar to gas dispersion in an environment with static objects. Another rule is the rug rule. The rug rule automaton is a system where every entity has a value from 1 to 256, which it averages with its eight neighbors' values, then adds one. This system produces behavior similar to heat flow on a plane and in some cases sound waves. Probabilistic cellular automata are automata systems with a probabilistic element. This means that every entity, upon executing its rule set, has a chance of behaving differently than it's supposed to. A real-life example of this kind of system is evolution. Every organism in this system follows the rules of reproduction, is, sub is subjected to the rules of natural selection, and contains the probabilistic element of random mutation. It's this system that we are going to replicate using cellular automata. The universe of our system is a, two, is a 200 by 200 bit map. Every entity in our system is a bit of color. As such, each entity has three non-integer values between 0 and 1 to represent the red, green, blue, uh, the red, green, and blue values given to a bit. The starting conditions in our system are determined by a 200 by 200 pixel image. Once converted to a bitmap, we end up with 40,000 bit entities with varying color values. To simulate sele selective pressure, another 200 by 200 pixel image is converted and used as a template for each bit to follow. This is analogous to a changing environment. Let's take a look at a hypothetical scenario of plant evolution. According to agriculture.vic.gov, three major factors in soil composition are pH, salinity, and dis Persivity. Let's say there is a world in which plants hold the genetic capabilities to live in varying levels of these three elements of, the so of soil composition, and these genetic codes can be represented as three non-integer numbers between 0 and 1. Let's also say that these plants have the ability to reproduce by averaging each non-integer number respectively with one of its neighbors and granting the offspring number the parent's location. We'll introduce random mutation by saying one in every 3,000 offspring will have an altered combination of numbers following some rules of mutation. In this example, 40,000 plants have adapted themselves to varying degrees of soil composition, and a cataclysmic event has completely altered the soil composition in which these plants reside. Given these plants' abilities to reproduce, the question becomes, how will these plants adapt to their new environment? Our bitmap model is now suited to answer the question. The only th the only thing different about our model is that the plant's genetic values for dealing with pH, salinity, and dispersivity are viewed as uh, RGB color values, red for pH, green for salinity, and blue for dispersivity. Let's look at a specific example. Here we have an image of colored squares. This image represents a landscape of varying soil values in which every plant has adapted to, to its patch of soil. This image of Mona Lisa will represent the, land, the same landscape after a cataclysmic event. The soil values are completely different now, but the plants still contain the genetic code that best suits their previous environment. Let's run a simulation where every plant gets a turn to mate with its neighbors and replace itself with one of its 
eight total offspring that best suits the new environment. We'll start the simulation without mutation and see where we get after 100 generations. What we see is that given the simple rule of selective averaging, the bits, or plants, adapt to their new environment, albeit poorly. Let's run it again with a 1 in 3,000 chance of mutation for every offspring. We can see that although the chance of mutation was rare and often not beneficial, the mutation still had a significant impact on the resulting image or landscape. To see this impact more clearly, let's take a look at an initial condition that would, have, that would benefit from more mutations. In this example, our initial condition is black and white, and the offspring obviously don't stand much of a chance. With mutation, however, the genetic diversity is available to subsequent generations to adapt more suitably to their environment. We can see the impact probabilistic elements have in cellular automata systems. So what impact can cellular automata systems have in science? As we have seen from this example, CA systems can be used to model real-life scenarios. Although our example was hypothetical and not biologically or ecologically perfect, the rules used were close enough to the laws of reproduction and evolution that we were able to see analogous outcomes to a changing ecology. Models like these are used in science to find explanations to complex systems that would otherwise be difficult to observe. The Schelling model, which models ethnic residential seg segregation, and Conway's Game of life, of life, which models bacterial growth, are examples of this. Although both are oversimplifications of their analogous systems, if taken with a grain of salt, one might find useful information pertaining to the fields of sociology and biology that would otherwise have been difficult to observe in, in the real thing. In our example of evolving plants, the adaptation process is difficult to observe in real life on account of the large amount of time it takes for the, for the process to happen. With simulated models of evolution, however, we can see simplified examples of this project sped up, and useful information might be available upon examination. In our custom model, we can see the effect rare and random mutation has on species in a changing ecological system.